Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our memorial meeting service this morning. We're going to open our meeting, first of all, with a, with a song, and then I'd ask you to bow your heads while we open with a word of prayer. So here's our opening song. Father, we thank you that we could be here this morning with our fellow brothers and sisters to meet in worship and in praise of you. Father, we ask for a blessing on our service today. Be with us. And guide us through this service. Please bless the words of our speaker today. And we ask for open minds and hearts from all of those who listen, that it may help us to rededicate ourselves this coming week to better follow you. Please be with all of those around the world, our brothers and sisters everywhere. And we do look forward to that day when all sin and suffering will be no more. We will be gathered with you and your son and your kingdom. We do ask all these things with the saving name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Have you ever had a message to say that someone has just noticed that the front door of your house or your room has been left open and then a further investigation finds that your house or your room has been broken into? The door's been broken and then when you look inside, all your, your special things, all your valuable items and all your special furniture have been smashed and broken and everything is ruined, everything has been broken. Well, that's, that's the story of what happens in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah is living in Shushan, which is up in the area of Babylon and, and, and the Persian Empire. And what happens is in, in Nehemiah 
chapter 1 and in verse 1, we have a date given, which is a time period around December. It's the ninth month of the Jewish calendar. And he gets news that Jerusalem has been not only destroyed, but it's still destroyed. Everything's in ruin. Everything's wrecked. There's no way of fixing it because the people have been taken prisoner and taken to Babylon and, and now they're in Persia. And the people that are left... Well, they're not interested in doing anything. And when Nehemiah got this news, he was really sad. In fact, he was so sad that he, that he broke down in tears. Nehemiah chapter 1 and, and verse 2 says that he asked concerning what had happened to the Jews and what happened to his city. And in verse 3 of Nehemiah chapter 1, he's told all the news, all the graphic news. And in verse 4, it says that it came to pass... When Nehemiah heard these words, that he says, I sat down and I cried and I cried and I cried for many days. He was devastated about this news. And then what happens is when we, we pick the story up in, in Nehemiah chapter 2, we find that we've now moved three months, three to four months to the month of Nisan, which is the first month of the Jewish calendar. So three to four months have passed by. And during that time, what we find is that Nehemiah has been praying to God for an answer because everything back that he knew back home had changed. Everything was ruined. It was wrecked. It was destroyed. And it couldn't be fixed because he was basically in a foreign country and and didn't have the freedom to return home. And so chapter 2 tells us that it's been three to four months. And we're also told that this man, Nehemiah, that he's, the, he's called the king's cupbearer. We learn that in, 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 in verse 11 of chapter 1. So he's a very important person in the Persian Empire. Even though he's a Jew... He has this important role, and his role is to protect the king. So his job was to be the, the wine taster, the food taster, to make sure that, that, that no one tried to poison or kill the king. And so he lived a very good life. That meant that he, he tasted the very best food, he drank the very best wine. He had a very, very comfortable job but he was still not happy because the city of Jerusalem and the temple of Jerusalem was in, in ruins. And what we're told about this man is that he prayed to God all the time. And this is really our exhortation for today, that when things look hopeless, when things look like they can't be fixed, this man put his faith and his trust in God. And he didn't know when his prayer was going to be answered. All he knew was that the only hope he had was in his God. And look what happens. It says in, in Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 4, he says that, Then the king said to me, What do you want? Having noticed that Nehemiah was sad, the king turns to Nehemiah and says, well, what do you want me to do? Now, this king, this is the king of the world. This is the king of Persia. The Persians had defeated the Babylonians, first of all with Cyrus, and then the following king. And now this king, he's now the Persian king, which is like the king of the world. And he notices that Nehemiah is sad, and he asks Nehemiah, well, what do you want? And look what Nehemiah asked for. It says that he says, he says he prays to God. And then he says to the king, if it please the king, and if, the, if your servants found favour, then can I return to the city and, and, and repair the city walls? And can I have letters? And can I have, can I have timber and trees from your forest? And can I, have a, can I have an escort? And he asked for all these things in verses 5, 6, seven and eight but here's the lesson 
Look what happens at the end of verse 8. And it says, and I'm going to I'm going to read from the New International Version. It says, Because of the graciousness and the gracious hand of my God was upon me, the king granted my request. I'm going to repeat that. Because of the gracious hand of my God was upon me, the king granted my request. What we're being told here is this. Nehemiah had his faith and his trust in his God, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That's where Nehemiah placed his trust. Yes, he served the king of the world, the king of the Persian Empire. Yes, he served him and he served him well. But when it comes to where his trust and his faith in, what this man Nehemiah knew was that he trusted only in the king of kings, his God. Because even in verse 4, when the king noticed that Nehemiah was sad, the very first thing that Nehemiah does is when the king says, well, what do you want? What can I give you? What does Nehemiah do? It says, I prayed to God. So you imagine that scene. Here is Nehemiah. He's before the king. He tastes the wine for the king. He passes it to the, he passes it to the king. The king's sad. He notices that and he says, Nehemiah, what's going on? And he says, well, Jerusalem's in ruin. You know, my people are struggling. It's just not a good thing happening. And the king says, well, what can I do for you? And Nehemiah says, he doesn't use these words, but in his head he says, I've got to ask my God what I'm going to say because he's the only one that can answer. And so he prays to his God because he knows that this king, as powerful as he is, is not as powerful as the God of Nehemiah, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So he prays to his God to give him an answer because this king, as powerful as he may think he is, is only powerful because of God putting him there. And so our exhortation this morning is that no matter what is happening in our life, it's not through our own strength that we can do things. We can't fix this world. We can't take all the poverty away. We can't take all the sadness away. We can't take all the sickness and the disease away. But we have confidence that our God can and that our God will in the kingdom. And so we put our faith and our trust in our God because of his hand. He will save us. He will redeem us. Despite what is going on in this world, despite what it looks like that it's just unfixable, God says, with me, all things are possible. And so we turn to that moment in time when our Lord Jesus Christ, meeting with his disciples, and we're told that, that as he sat down with his disciples, that he broke bread with them. And it says in 1 Corinthians and in chapter 11, our Lord Jesus Christ, or the Apostle Paul says, concerning our Lord Jesus Christ, he says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. For I received of the Lord that which I delivered to you also, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And so let us offer thanks for the bread. Loving Heavenly Father, we come before you now to praise you and to worship you and to thank you, loving God, 
to thank you that we can put our faith and our trust and our hope in you. And though this world we live in is a broken world, we pray, loving Father, for that time when your Son, who we see in the emblem of this bread, who lived a perfect life, though he gave his life in perfect obedience for us. And so as we partake of this bread, the symbol of his body, may it be, loving Father, that we will follow him to be more like him in the days that remain until your kingdom comes. For we offer our thanks through Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our King. Amen. And so it's recorded that when he had given thanks, he took the bread and he broke it and he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us give thanks for the cup. Loving and merciful Heavenly Father, we come before you to continue our praise and our worship and our thankfulness to you. We thank you, loving Father, for this, this wine, the symbol of your son's shed blood. We pray, loving Father, that you would look down upon us as we confess our sins, that you would have mercy that you would have grace, that you would forgive us, Father, that you would wash us clean, that you would remove our sins as far as the east is from the west. For we pray, loving Father, that thou would have mercy upon us. We thank you for this symbol. We pray, Father, that you will strengthen us to live our lives more in accordance with your ways. For we thank you and praise you through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And it says, after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Well, thanks uh, very much, everyone, for joining us. We uh, pray and trust that uh, this little meeting's been of some help to you. Uh, continue to care and support each other. Um, keep uh, keep uh, in contact with each other um, and, and help and, and strengthen and, in, and encourage each other in these days that remain until our Lord Jesus Christ returns and the kingdom of God is established. So we pray that God will be with you until we meet again. And until that time, bye for now. We're going to close our meeting now with a hymn and then with a word of prayer. God bless. Talk soon. Bye.
Father in heaven, we come and we are thankful for the time that you have given us today. That time to sit down and to look at the life of your son, for us to take that bread and wine, those things that that are representative of his life, blood poured out for us and, and his flesh. And we are so thankful, Heavenly Father, for that hope that we have in his life. It has been illustrated to us today that from this moment on we can go forward into a new week and we can be uh, revigorated for the things of you, for your word, for for a life in you and for a life in your son. We so much look forward to seeing the return of your son soon and it is our prayer as we leave here today that it might be very soon, even tonight, that our lives might be interrupted by the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So be with us as we go into our week. Be with us every single day, Father. We ask this prayer through the Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen.